Welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. Today we're going to do an update on my credit card reward strategy. That's where I get as much cash back and points and miles as I can from our credit cards. But rather than spending it, what I do is save and invest it. So I'm going to give you an update on that, how much we've saved, what I'm doing with it. I'm going to give you a three card credit card strategy that you can use uh, as sort of a model or template if you'd like to try this on your own. I'm going to show you a credit card you can actually consider using if you pay rent and want to get cash back from your rent payments. I even have a credit card that I'm going to show you for those small business owners uh, out there. And the reason I do this really is to show you the power of saving and investing relatively small amounts of money. So to start with, I want to show you the power of, 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 of that this strategy can have over long periods of time. I even want to show you how it can affect you if you're in retirement. We start to think about withdrawal strategies, you know, the 4% rule. Believe it or not, credit card rewards can have a not insignificant effect on that withdrawal strategy. I'm going to show that to you today. In fact, we're going to begin with those two things now. So here we go. I want to start with someone maybe just starting out uh, or, you know, years away from retirement. Can, can credit cards really add up to a significant amount of money? So let's imagine we're starting with, you have to put in something, so I'll just start with a dollar. We'll assume you charge $5,000 a month to a credit card and you earn 2% cash back. Now I'm gonna show you how you can earn more than that in just a minute, but let's assume 2%, so that would come out to $100 a month. And we'll do this over, I don't know, a 45 year uh, you know, sort of working career, so this before you retire. And we'll assume you can earn 9%. I know this number over here, you're looking at it and you're thinking, well, Rob, that's obviously an error. I don't know who created this, this savings calculator, but, th but that can't be right. Well, actually, it turns out it is. I've checked it on a number of calculators because to be honest with you, I, did, I didn't believe it either. Yeah, investing small amounts of money over time turns into piles of cash. And the great thing about credit card rewards is it doesn't require a sacrifice. I mean, I think sacrificing and controlling your spending, very important, a very valuable skill, frankly, to learn. But at the same time, why not also save money in ways that are easier? And I, I can't think of anything easier than credit card rewards. Of course, you want to pay those cards off in full every month. You don't want to overspend. But there you go. Um, a, a relatively simple way to generate a lot of money. Now, of course, this is before inflation. And yes, 45 years from now, that won't be worth nearly as much. Uh, but again, this is just from credit card rewards. And by the way, we're not increasing the contribution by inflation, right? We're assuming it stays at $100 for 45 years. So there you go. That's for folks accumulating. What about folks that are retiring or you know, in retirement? So I went over to the FI calc here. We've looked at this many times. And I'm assuming a million dollar portfolio, you're taking out 40,000 a year. This is the 4% rule. Now the 4% rule succeeds in every year and uh, going back to 1881. However, if you look at it in FI calc, you'll see that there are a number of years in red, which means it didn't succeed. And I believe that's just because of the asset classes they're using might be slightly different than what Bill Bingen used when he created his 4% rule. Doesn't matter for our purposes, but I wanna show you 1964 as an example. So here you ran out of money, if you can read that, in 29 years. So it almost made it, but not quite, and you're broke, right? Now, uh, what happens if we add, and I've, I've checked it over here, I'm assuming $800, not a month, a year, in credit card rewards. So the idea was you're spending 40,000, you, you can put it all on credit cards, you, you earn 2%. Now I understand not all expenses can be put on credit cards, but at the same time, I'm gonna show you how you can earn more than 2% anyway. So it's a rough estimate. And that doesn't seem like much. I mean, we'll all take it, right? But I mean, $800 a year. Um, and by the way, you wouldn't pay taxes on that $800. That's a nice benefit. But here's the thing. It actually has a noticeable effect. Let me turn it off. And you can see these all turn back to red. You turn it back on and some of them go to yellow. Now it doesn't turn all of the reds to yellow. Uh, you know, it doesn't solve all our problems, but let's take a look at number at 1964 again. Not only did we last now 30 years, but at the end we had $50,000 and that's on an after inflation basis. That's how FI Calc works. All from just thoughtfully having a credit card strategy that earns uh, some rewards that in retirement we would, we would presumably we'd spend. It can have, again, a not insignificant uh, difference. And so, you know, yes, in, in any given month, small amounts of money, relatively speaking, but if you do smart things with it, it turns into either a pile of cash while you're accumulating or it can help offset some of your retirement expenses once you retire. So I want to give you a 
a, a three card strategy. I'm gonna have links to all these cards below the video, but I'm gonna give you three cards to consider. I use some of them, some I don't, but I think this is a good strategy. And then I'm gonna show you one card for paying your rent and another card for small business owners. So let's get started. The, the, the starting point for, for all of this is a, a standard card you can use for everyday expenses. And I think what you need is a what I call a 2% cashback card, a card that pays at least 2% on everything. Uh, probably my favorite right now is City Double Cash. You get 1% when you make the charge, 1% when you pay for it. So hopefully you're paying your bills off in full every month so you get that 2%. Um, at present, it also offers a $200 uh, sign-up bonus. Of course, you've got to meet the spend requirements, but it's, it's relatively straightforward. Uh, I'll link to this page. It actually shows a number of different options. Wells Fargo's got a good option. You see Synchrony does too. Um, Alliant has a, a great option where you can actually earn two and a half percent, but there is a fee and uh, I found them a little bit difficult to, to work with from time to time. But all of these I think are good options. This is the foundation and it's really important because there's gonna be a, a lot of charges that you can't get some sort of elevated reward for. Think, you know, uh, medical payments. It's hard to find a credit card that will pay more for medical payments as an example. Um, and, and so there's a lot of purchases where you might not be able to get you know three four five percent you want to have two percent as your base now we can do better in certain categories of spending so the key here is to figure out where you spend your money the most and get credit cards that can then get you better than two percent i'm going to show you two examples the first one is the blue cash preferred card from american express it's sort of known as a a supermarket cashback card it pays six percent uh, at grocery stores up to the first 6,000 per year. Uh, and th there are other good options. I carry the Amazon Prime card. It's um, uh, 5% at Whole Foods, but I know a lot of folks don't shop at Whole Foods. Amex has another, uh, has their gold card, which can be another good option. Uh, but I don't like the value of, of Amex membership reward points if you want to convert them to cash. And so I think this is a good alternative. And the reason I like it, and note there is a $95 fee, but the reason I like it is because it, it does it covers a number of bases. You get the six percent at supermarkets up to the limit, but you get six percent on streaming services. Again, it won't be a huge amount of money. Uh, although I do know some people that probably spend a couple hundred bucks a month on streaming, but still I'll take it. You get three percent at, at gas stations. Again, could you do better with another card? Yes, but I'm trying to keep this as simple with as few cards as possible. And then you get 3% on, on transit. Now, again, this 1% on all other purchases, I would never use this card for anything other than these categories, right? That, that's, that's the importance of a 2% card, right? Because if I've got a purchase that you know, doesn't qualify for elevated rewards, for me, I'm coming back, say, to the city double cash as an example. All right, so that's card number two. And then the third card that I like a lot is um, Chase Freedom Unlimited. Again, uh, this does not have an annual fee, has a $200 welcome bonus. Actually, I should go back. Um, Blue, Blue, Ca uh, Blue Cash Preferred has 250 welcome bonus too. Of course, you got to spend the uh, hit the spend requirement. But Chase Freedom Unlimited, what I like is you get 5% cash back on travel. Now, you do have to book it through Chase Ultimate Rewards. And there, um, you do have to keep in mind that you don't always get the best travel deal through Chase Ultimate Rewards. Sometimes it's a minor difference. But you do want to keep an eye on that. But 5% cash back for travel is extraordinary. And then you get 3% at drugstores. And, and this is important, 3% dining. And so between uh, the, a 2% card like City Double Cash, the Blue Cash Preferred, and the Chase Freedom Unlimited, I think it covers the vast majority of people and the, and the ways that they spend their money. So three cards and you're done. Um, again, you could keep it simple and just go with a 2% card and you'd get 2% on everything. But if you want to try to increase that, I think you could probably get close to 3% on average for a lot of the expenses. All right. I mentioned two other cards. Uh, the first one is uh, a Wells Fargo call card that they've partnered with Built. And it gives you one point on rent payments up to 50,000 points each calendar year. So again, it's not a huge benefit, but a lot of people pay rent and they get nothing for it. And rent can obviously be a pretty significant part of your monthly budget. So uh, this is an option to consider for those that rent. And it does give you 2x and 3x on travel and dining, respectively. So there are you know, some other categories you could use this for. Again, uh, the 3x on dining is pretty good. The 2x on travel, 
I would just prefer the Chase card, assuming I can go through Chase Ultimate Rewards. But there's no annual fee on this one. So for a lot of folks, you might get this card and just use it for rent. And why not? You're going to get 1% back on your rent up to the, up to the limit. And then I mentioned small business owners. Um, uh, this is the card I like. I, it just came out, and I'm actually going to apply for it. And, and this is not a typo. A $1,000 sign-up bonus. You've got to spend 10 grand in the first three months, but for a lot of small businesses, not a big deal. The thing I like about this one is you get five, same sort of deal. You get 5% on travel when booked through Chase Ultimate Rewards. So if your business does a lot of travel, that's good. You actually get 2.5% on purchases of $5,000 or more. Again, for small businesses, you may have a lot of those types of purchases. But even if you don't, you get 2% cash back on all other purchases. So this is a very solid small business credit card. I like it a lot. There is a $195 annual fee though, so you've got to keep that in mind. So I know I've kind of gone through this pretty quickly, but it's really not that complicated. I always start with sort of a 2% card as my foundation, and then I add a couple other cards if there's categories of spending where I want to get that elevated amount. Again, I like uh, the Amex Blue Cash Preferred and Chase uh, uh, Freedom Unlimited are, are a, an example of this sort of three card strategy that's very good. I mentioned a couple other cards for rent and for, for small business. and uh, But that's basically it. It's really that simple. And I promised you I'd kind of give you an update on my uh, balance. So I'm looking at it now. $30,766.93. Now I had that at Betterment for a while, mainly just to try out the, the service. I did a video on it and I like Betterment a lot. I've since moved it from there and it's, it's sitting in cash at the moment. And I, my, I need to figure out how I'm going to invest it. It will be invested and I'll share an update down the road when I figure out exactly how. One thought was to maybe go to another robo-advisor like maybe Wealthfront, but I don't think I'm gonna do that uh, just because it's a lot of work to keep transferring it. I'd kinda like to put it somewhere now where it's just gonna stay. And so I'm looking at different investments to do that. But yeah, over $30,000 and that's even after the, the market declines we've had uh, this year, which have been, as you know, pretty significant. So yeah. You know, investing, saving small amounts of money over time, yeah, they turn into piles of cash. And as we saw, they can even help folks who are in retirement stretch their dollars as they're, you know, trying to make ends meet in retirement. So there you go. That's my strategy. That's the status. Those are some of the cards I like. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.